I've been writing about media centers since 2004. Manuals, quick start guides, how-tos, marketing copy, brochures, talking points. There's been many times when I've stared at my computer screen and wondered, what else could I possibly have to say about this product? Walk around CES and you'll see many OEM companies that are putting together these powerful, beautiful little PCs and they're demonstrating them with Media Center on screen. Walk the halls at CES and sooner or later a Media Center screen will be seen. It's never far away. The UI has always had a magical ability to draw people in. I remember when Media Center was such a great new idea that it would capture all of the buzz at every trade show. And now it's more like a ubiquitous presence. This realization became clear to me today when I toured the next gen home. In the first room of the home, the guy started to explain Media Center and show its features. And everyone in my group I noticed was nodding, nodding like, yes, we know what this is. It's cool, but what else do you have? The home was built inside the South Hall. It was tiny, like half a trailer or a caboose. It had a Cortexa automation system controlling Insteon lights. There was an HP Media Smart server in the back. And up front, a server by Aspen Media Products, which had the HD Giants component on it. This is a high definition delivery system, which allows you to download and store high definition movies and music. They told me they're right now the only legal way to download and keep high definition movies on a PC. What was also interesting was all this content that they had downloaded onto this server was viewable by extenders throughout the house. On this trip I had hoped to grab short interviews with various eHome team members to post on my blog on the green button, but so far I've been unable to do that, by and large because every time I've come by the Microsoft booth, and I've done this several times each day, it has been absolutely jam-packed with people and it hasn't mattered. They're showing the Windows 7 version of Media Center in the Media Center section, and there's always a big crowd gathered around. Clearly, Media Center has retained its magical abilities to draw people in when it's up on a big screen. This is Jessica Zahn of the Zoom team, although longtime Green Button members will remember her from her days as a program manager for eHome. She has over 1,500 posts on the green button, the most by any active Microsoft employee. Now she has over 2,000 posts over on Zoom forms. I've talked with her a few times about the green button and about Zoom because she's someone who really grasps what a community like the green button can offer to Microsoft and how important it is to engage with the community. I talked with some of the Windows Home Server folks, too, wanting to learn more about the future of that product and when and if it might include Media Center. But like all Microsoft employees, there's very little they can say about what's coming up next, and even less so when you turn a video camera on. What I'm to say is, we're definitely aware of the need for integration between the two. Sure. But we have no plans we can announce right now. But right now there's... Right now there's effectively no actual integration between the two. Okay. You can do a bunch of hacks so you can use Windows Home Server as storage from Media Center. Right, like I can point my Media Center to look at folders on the home server. Absolutely, right. yes. Can I store recorded TV there? You can store it there. But I can't play it from there? Correct. I understand. Right. I understand. But you can if you do a bunch of hacks again. Which okay. is not supported by Microsoft right. at all. I right. understand. I understand. OK. Very cool. Well, what are you guys showing here? Home what server we're showing here is basically with the new hardware releases from a bunch of different people. Okay, so so HP has a new box. OK. Which uh, the fundamental changes there are that they've changed the internals, but they've also added, uh, updated their own software dramatically. And I'm okay. a bunch of functionality they didn't have before. These three are all new. Okay. All come from the. These two have announced at the show just the past a couple of days. Right. This one hasn't been announced in the US yet, but it's been announced in those other countries. And who makes that one? That's Acer. Okay. Okay. Um, and these are various different incarnations of the, you know, it's the same yeah. software from our point of view, yeah. but, but different hardware. Yeah. And each of them extends the software in their own way and yeah. provides different functionalities. Yeah. So I can probably predict your reaction, but a lot of people ask on the green button, 
okay, I need more storage. Should I go with some sort of NAS setup I create myself, or should I go with Windows Home Server? I'm going to say Windows Home Server. Yeah, and that seems to be the sentiment. And, yeah. and it seems like, like you said, Microsoft seems to be aware that these two things could really make sweet, sweet love together. And there's a, absolutely. And there's yeah. a couple of reasons, that, even without that, that okay. would be good. So Windows Home Server is not just a storage device. Okay. It's also a platform. Right. So you can extend it. You can add a bunch of different add-ins. We have 70 add-ins that various companies around the world provide okay. to do a whole variety of things. Your own custom websites, home automation, media yeah. integration, all sorts yeah. of cool things. Now, if you were going to build your own Windows Home Server, what are some of like the minimum specs you need? Minimum specs, we need a processor like, like a Pentium 3 minimum. Okay. Kind of around about a gigahertz. Okay. Um, we recommend gig of RAM or more. You okay. can get away with half a gig, but we recommend a gig. Okay. That's Very pretty much it. Okay. And then at least, I don't know, 80, 100 gigs of storage. I headed over to SANS today. This is a branch arm of CES that in years past I've always been too busy to visit. This is where I found Silicon Dust, makers of the HD Home Run the tuner preferred by a lot of Green Button members. Okay, this is Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Eddie is an engineer, yeah? Uh, no, I'm not engineering. I um, actually handle operations. Okay, for Silicon Dust, and uh, he's going to show us a couple of the products they got here. So what we got here is the uh, Silicon Dust HD Home Run, which has been on the market for roughly two years now. Sure. Um, two digital, uh, dual digital tuners. Um, over the air ATSC or digital palm, either or both, um, hooked up to your network, route it out. All the networks, uh, all the computers on your network now get digital TV. Very cool. We got a setup over here going. Um, we got two units hooked up to that D Link router over there. Okay. On that laptop, we got uh, Vista Media Center okay. going on. And over here, we got a Mac Mini running ITV. Okay. Now, you said uh, you just launched one for Europe? Yeah, we launched a uh, DVBT version and a okay. DVBC okay. version for Europe. Um, pretty much the equivalent, but for the European market. Okay. Um, like the UK, Germany, France, um, I believe uh, Australia, New Zealand, Taiwan also runs on the same frequency as well, so it's compatible. With it. Okay. Tell me about this. This here is the one U unit okay. uh, for um, a rack mount. Like hotels, yeah. uh, schools, libraries, things like that. My that house. Be, if you have enough money for it, sure, why not? Um, you hook up. Uh, well, it has eight tuners inside. Essentially, what it is is uh, it's a tuner four, four of these yeah. with a, a gigabit switch inside. Okay. And, uh, it gives you multicast capability. Okay. And it gives you uh, static channel mapping. Yeah. So what you can do is a uh, tuner, let's say tuner A, tuner B, tuner C. Up, right. Right. Let's say tuner one, two, three. Right. Let's say tuner one could be CBS. Tuner two could be ABC, vice versa, et cetera, et cetera. Um, once you map those channels, basically, let's say 100 users should access that one tuner at any given time on the network. Okay. Okay. What What is the MSRP on that? Do you know? Um, just right around five grand. Around five grand. Okay. That's comparable. I'd say. It's 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 a fair price. Competitors go for I don't know ten thousand dollars or something. Do you guys have any plans to do anything with Ochre? Ochre. Cable card. Cable card. We don't have any plans, but actually we had a Cable Labs representative come by. Okay. She kind of came by like this and asked, yeah. why are you not Cable certified? Right. And we said, right. it's too much red tape, too hard to do. Yeah. And she goes, no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> da -da. Right, right. So um, I wasn't part of the conversation, but um, we'll be working with them to integrate some kind of uh, decoding of encryption and things like that. Sure, that would be. Device. Yeah, that would That would awesome. really help us out a lot, because uh, that's probably our biggest drawback is right. uh, encryption. Right. Okay. Anything else new coming out that we need Anything to know else? about? Um, we're also looking for um, someone that can OEM a satellite set-top box, something like that, so we can integrate our product into like a satellite system. That would be cool. Yeah, that would be cool <laughs> too. And uh, it would be real cool is if you did the car Direct TV. Just decided not to do. It. <laughs> you know. If How about TV it? Would what if you do it in your right. spare time? Uh, Me and you'll do it. We'll sell them on eBay. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Very good. All right, Eddie. Well, thanks for your time. Check out the green button, okay? Because right. people talk about your tuners there well, all the actually, time. actually, so. I get green button HD home run alerts. That's okay. my Google all the time. Okay. So. Very cool. All right. All right. Good times. All right.